Welcome to episode one of season eight at Leeds. You'll notice I'm already at transfer deadline day. If you weren't aware, and most of you should be because we mentioned it in the last few episodes of season seven, we're doing a brief three or four episode mini series for season eight of just Champions League games. In the full seven uh, seasons we did, we won everything there was to win other than the UEFA Super Cup and the Champions League. I can confirm that this season, as well as seen this far, we did win the UEFA Super Cup by two goals to one in extra time. Erling Braut Orland scored in the 110th minute. Now, this is only going to be three or four episodes long. Today we'll do the group stage. Uh, I'm then going to need your transfer feedback for January before I can record any more. So, as such, tomorrow's episode on Saturday will either be late i.e. not at 12 o'clock, potentially at 3 or later, or won't be there at all and we'll wait till Sunday to get the next upload. I'm going to try and get it out tomorrow and I'll keep you guys informed over on Twitter, so do make sure you're following me on the link below. Uh, and if anything changes, then I'll let you know if it's going to be delayed a day, but it will be 3pm or later tomorrow if it comes out tomorrow. If not, it'll be Sunday and we'll have to miss a day, but that's so I can get your feedback for transfers. So it's a worthwhile sacrifice. We sit, at this stage, 8th in the league season. I'm simming, just I just simmed through the calendar. I didn't even, like, watch the sims. I just went to the 31st and pressed sim. So, uh, we won the Carabao, Carabao, won the Community Shield. We beat Wolves. We won against Milan. We lost to Everton. We beat West Brom, but drew with Liverpool. So, it's not been the worst start to the season. Seven points from four games, but it's not necessarily been the best start to the season. This is the state of my starting lineup right now. Nicolo Barela is into the starting lineup ahead of Calvin Phillips, who dropped in rating towards the end of last season. And Barela is higher rated and a better player, so he's in, and Calvin Phillips is to the bench. Outside of that, we obviously also welcomed Ansu Fati to the club. He's involved at Cam in the rotation 11 and on the bench here for the starting team. And we also have, uh, where are you, Oscar Melendo who currently isn't in the starting lineup for either side, but is on the bench for the rotation 11. And should I need him be, he'll be on the bench for this 11 as well. And so I could perhaps put him on the bench for this 11, considering Jared Bowen is in the starting 11 of the other one. So uh, Melendo might get some substitute action, so to speak. So in my Champions League group, this episode will have the entirety of the group stage in it, and we're going to sim everything else. In my group stage, I have Shakhtar Donetsk, Bayer Leverkusen and Spartak Moscow. That's a progressible group. There's no standout team like AC Milan last year. So I fully expect us to get through that. I don't expect to have to play more than the usual three games. And we'll sim the other three. But I'll show you those sims. Whereas the league games I won't show you. The sims will just sim via the calendar. I wanted to start here though. So you guys could see what's happened in the summer transfer window. And I can give you a rundown of all of the top deals, so you know who is and isn't available, potentially, for your transfer suggestions for January. I'm open to anyone in any position for this one-off miniseries season. I have £162 million currently, but I'm open to selling players as well. Perhaps, um, perhaps Yusuf Fatal could be sold. We saw that Alan Saint-Maximin's rating dropped towards the end of last season as well but whether you guys would like him to stay at the club is entirely up to you but I'm open to pretty much most players other than Tyler Roberts, Orlan, Marlon, Sancho, White or Phillips leaving the club outside of that I'm or Jamie Shackleton I'm happy to move most other people on to be fair and a key area to improve would probably be centre-back actually what I can do I need to put uh, I need to put Ed Militao back into this starting eleven. There we go. Now that he's back from injury from the end of last season, so Militao's there. I could maybe upgrade Cooper at centre back in the rotation side. That's how that team looks right now. If we sell Yusuf Fatal, we can maybe sign a much better left back. Uh, Jared Bowen is probably as effective as we're going to get in that role anyway. So I'm not sure. It's entirely up to you. I will uh, make whatever signings uh, you want. So. Well, provided I can afford them, obviously. So, moving forward then, let's crack on. The biggest deals in this window so far. 
Leroy Sané from City to Barcelona, Bernardo Silva from City to PSG, and Donny van der Beek going the other way from Barcelona to Manchester City for £58.9 million. So Manchester City in the thick of it in this window. Not sure what else is going to happen. So we shall wait and see as we progress through transfer deadline day if any other large deals go through. And there must have been something rather sizable there for that to go through. But no, it must have been a couple of uh, deals that were of a medium fee. We have seen transfer windows that have had transfer deals of upwards of £100 million. But nothing of that ilk in this window yet. And on transfer deadline day, halfway through it, not that much money spent. Obviously, 200 million is an astronomical sum of money for a regular person, but or in regular scenarios. But in a transfer deadline day situation with an entire league trying to buy players, that's a really quiet window. So we'll have a look quickly and see what the other sides in the league have done. And then we'll uh, progress forward to that first Champions League game. So Sauer and Meyer in and out at Bournemouth. Arne Meyer, don't know where he's gone. Arsenal have signed Vlasic, Baluta and Goretzka. Still no goalkeeper. Vargas, Diop and McBurney out for them. Little bit of business for Bristol City. Uh, Chelsea have signed Nelson, Yanazai and Pedrosa with Morata and Dela Cruz going out. Everton have just sold Yusuf Palzen. Fulham have signed uh, just the one person. I've done nothing obviously yet, but we're going to do all of our business in January so I can get your feedback for it. Pellegrini in at Leicester and Loft out. Uh, Liverpool, Martin and Masrawi in. City have also sold Kingsley Coman too. I'm not sure what that fee was. Under 58 million, but still a big window for City. They've signed Poche as well. Poche? Not sure how to pronounce that. Mikel Marino in at United with Correa, Fred, Laird and Totino leaving. Mbula, Nelson and Bebu. Newcastle's business. Forest doing a little bit as well. Uh, nothing for Southampton. Tottenham, that's where Kingsley Coman's gone. Tottenham Hotspur, Jack Grealish in there as well. Uh, Morata has gone to Watford. Duncan, Duarte and Cipriano, Watford's other business. West Brom just signing Rosales. And West Ham signing Coop Miners, Oliveira, De Freitas and Popold. And Correa in at Wolves. So I'll show you the big deals of the window. And then... We shall uh, progress and start playing some games in this uh, eighth and final mini-series season. The Cambridge United Road to Glory will start later on in the week. So they were our third, or the top three. Then it was Sean Kevin Algas now, our former player. £53.9 million to Bayern Munich. Mikel Marino, as we saw. Kingsley Coman, as we saw. Pina Monti has gone to Valencia. Iñaki Williams has gone to Inter. Uh, Frimpong, Masrao, we saw Goretzka to Arsenal. That would be a good deal. He's probably still quite good. 87 rated is decent. Chiquese to Real Madrid. Rodolfo Dimbolo from Juve to Bayern. Uh, Vlasic, as we saw. Pedrosa, Sao, Vargas from Arsenal to Milan. Uh, Reese Nelson, it was. The Nelson that went to Chelsea. Former Arsenal man. Regen to PSG. I'll scout him out of interest just to see what he's all about. Uh, out of pure curiosity, Kalu from Bordeaux to Dortmund, Maxi Gomez to Juventus, some smaller deals. I'll push he was a regen. Again, just out of pure curiosity, we'll scout him. Thomas Partey went to AC Milan. These are all smaller deals. So, Gineppo to Barcelona. Where was it? Yusuf Palzen went? Schalke. Back to the Bundesliga for him. Totino went to um, Napoli. Moro to Inter from Benevento. Just curious to see what these regions look like in the eighth season, to be fair. Well, that was the uh, transfer window then. And we shall progress forward now and go and play our first games in the Champions League. I can't guarantee that I'll win it in this mini-series. Uh, if I don't, then it is what it is. I'm not going to try... Um, well, I'm not going to artificially get myself to the final. If I don't make the final, I don't make the final. That's just the way of things. So we'll sim this. I'm going to have to be careful with my squad management. I'll sim this with the rotation 11 so that my strongest 11 is available for the game in the Champions League. I'll just quickly skip that. We get a 1-0 win through Cunha. Good. Back to winning ways in the Premier League. And I'll stop here because that will be copywritten. So then, Shakhtar Donetsk in the first game of the group stage. We should hopefully comfortably be able to get through this. Tyler Roberts is going to be starting at Cam as ever. It's the beginning of our Champions League, but we've been waiting for this match. We want to get stuck in 
Uh, our players are strong and talented. Our squad is outrageous now. And we'll probably get better still in January with your transfer suggestions. So Leverkusen, Spartak Moscow and Donetsk. I'll probably play this one as it's the first one. Play Leverkusen, then sim Spartak Moscow twice and see where we stand. So I know which games to uh, which game to play as the final third and final one of this group stage. And then from there, uh, we shall just see how far we go. If we do really well, then the next episode will have the round of 16 and the quarterfinals in it. And then after that, we'll probably do either the semi-final on its own semi-finals on their own and then a final special or semi-final and final in their own video maybe on the set maybe i'll do them separately if i get there but as a double upload the same way we did with the fa cup and community and uh europa league finals in uh, i see i can put engel back in now can't i why am i even oh he's 92 rated now stefan engel jesus christ i'll have to remember to do that in the uh main menus as well. Right then, Shakhtar Donetsk away. Operation Champions League is underway. Shakhtar's starting lineup then. Ismaili is a name we recognise from there, but at this stage of the season, I'm not sure there's anyone else in there that we would recognise properly. Popov on the right-hand side, Solomon perhaps on the left, but other than that, I'm not sure about this team. Popov on the run down the right-hand side and an early delivery. Went away to Renato and spread out wide here to Jaden Sancho. Tyler Roberts. Give it back to Jaden. Orlands on the run. We'll look to play him into that gap. And I've got so many men available in the middle. I can't really not find anyone, can I? Marlin. Oh my god. Throw in. <laughs> um Danielle. The hell was that, mate? The pass from Orland was supposed to find one of the two men in the middle. Slightly frustrated that it went all the way across the mile in the first place. To be fair, perhaps from that angle, I should have recognised the fact that I could easily have just squared that back into the middle again to one of those two people and not try to try and smash it in from a tight angle. But you live and learn. Good to see that we can cut Shakhtar open, though, in these opening stages. And another example in another new season of shitty gameplay mechanics. The defender is in such a good position there. You ask him to attack the ball and he stands there and lets the man that's over there run up, run past him and head the ball in the back of the net. He's not even close. Not even close. And he's gone for a full on, oh, I'm going to get rid of that. No, you fucking not. 1-0 Shakhtar. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hope that's fixed for FIFA 21. Here we go there nicely to Renato. All in. Battling hard against the defender and just shaking him off. Well, we're in back level not long after going 1-0 down. Slightly fortunate, perhaps, that Orlan was just able to bulldoze his way past the defender. But <laughs> I don't think the defender really stood a chance. Not even the best of finishes, really, but we'll take it. 1-1, just four minutes. Shakhtar were in front for. Do we keep that? Thank you. Jaden Sancho will do the same. Quickly work some extra space to then get it back inside here to Orlan. And Jaden Sanchez made a good run, actually. I could try another McGeady spin. Oh, it's a Berber spin. It's a good save by Trubin to keep Jaden Sancho out. Renato Sanchez with the delivery. Up goes Matavenko. We'll try again. Renato towards the back post this time. Orlan's there. It's Matavenko again that gets his head to it first. Come on, lads. Let's actually win an aerial battle in this game, shall we? It's going to draw kindly for Tyler Roberts and almost deflected kindly into the back of the net as well. Oh, and at the second attempt, he's put it well over the bar. I'll have that, please. No, Solomon does well to get it to Ismaili, who runs straight into Hakimi. And he's out of position now, so Jaden Sancho can get into the space in behind. Right, I'm going to try and whip this into the middle. And Orlan, oh, can't quite get there, but Daniel Marlin should have the pace to keep this in. And it's done really well to do so. Back inside looking for Tyler Roberts. Back there is Nicolo Barela. How is his finesse shot? Not sure. He's not had the chance to shoot for me yet, Nicolo Barela. But he's been involved in a little bit of the midfield play thus far. Five minutes to go till half time. We still look like the better team. Quite obviously the better team. But not able to show that via the scoreline yet. Sancho. I see Renato Sanchez arriving. Oh, perhaps I should have used him. I imagine that this will be the easiest game of the group stage, in theory. I think Shakhtar Donetsk are probably 
worse than Spartak Moscow, but I don't think there's too much difference between the two. Obviously, Leverkusen are going to be the uh, main test. Just going to keep that in as well. And away, please. Oh, I hoped I powered up with the X button to try and kick it away rather than slide, but never mind. Uh, Moravec will take the corner for Shakhtar. And they might get themselves a goal to go in front before half-time because the clearance was terrible. Oh, my God. Oh, how, 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 how has that not gone in? Whoa. They might have been really lucky with their first goal because it was a crappy gameplay mechanic that led to them taking it. But they can count themselves very unlucky not to have scored a second there. I don't quite know how that hasn't gone in. Wow. Big second half on the horizon. I just noticed that Orlan and Tyler Roberts now are both 90 rated too, as well as Sancho and Engel being 92. That starting 11 is disgusting. Into Renato. Tyler Roberts is making the run. Renato's gone again and actually he's got space to get into here. But I'm going to have to be careful not to let the defenders back in. Oh, I thought Marlon had done just enough to beat the man there. And unfortunately, he hasn't. And Medic will bring it forward for Shakhtar as they look to perhaps go in front yet again here. Ball back to Ismaili and Solomon forward there. Ben White showing good enough strength to hold the man off. And oh, oh, now's my opportunity. Hey, Raymond Flick with Stefan Engel. There you go. It's only taken me, <laughs> only taken me seven seasons to do that. Well, eight seasons, I guess, because we signed him season one. Oh, there we go. Finally, I was able to do it. <laughs> I'll leave that holler in, even though not really anything happened there. Just so I can show you that I did actually remember to do it. Actually, something might happen here. Solomon into the box. No, Stefan Engel is going to comfortably claim that. Half an hour, and that's all remaining to get ourselves a uh, winning goal here away from home in the Ukraine. I might make a change, actually. Let's see what we can do from the bench. Unfortunately, Ansu Fati and Cunha aren't quite fit enough, but Melendo could come on. Jaden Sancho has not actually done that much in this game. Melendo could play at Cam, actually. Maybe I'd be better off playing him at Cam instead of Ansu Fati. What's his finishing? 82. No, Fati's finishing is 88, so Fati will start at Cam moving forward in the uh, rotation side. Tyler Adams is up to 88 now. Some more growth for him as well. The side was already good enough, but with numerous players all continuing to grow at the beginning of this eighth season. You wonder just how good this team will be by the end of uh, this final campaign. Nice tackle by Marlon. Poor pass by Marlon. All I'm trying to bully the defender again, but not successful on this occasion. And they look to maybe get themselves in front again. Sikan kicks out against Ben White. My substitutions will happen now. And they're taking Medits off and bringing someone else on as well. Popov will take the corner. It's Alan Patrick coming on for them. Oh, nearly winning the header at the near post. Bondar down, Barela away. All in. Support here from Renato Sanchez, but really anywhere else to go. Uh, ben White in there. Oh, Melendo's made a good run. Can I finally fill that gap? No, it's perhaps a bit ambitious. That might cause me some problems now. Sikan to Alan Patrick to Sikan. Comfortable enough for Stefan Engel. Easy save. 20 to go. This is getting quite frustrating now. But hopefully we're able to dig deep and find a winning goal. Challenge, well up, Barela. But unfortunately, it didn't fall for Renato Sanchez. Bondar turns well. Through the gap to Alan Patrick. Here's Solomon, Alan Patrick again. Again, comfortable enough for Stefan Engel. And bowled out to Orlan. Good first touch. Uh, poor strength, which is not normally something you say with Orlan. And still, Shakhtar come forward. Come on, lads. Oh, keeper's not going to get to that. And now Marcus Antonio draws the save up Engel. This is one highlight that was supposed to be just a rainbow flick with Stefan Engel and has now gone on for about 20 in-game minutes. Catch that, please. He's not. Thankfully, he's back to his feet. Mikel Antonio, Malassia heads away. Challenge, Tyler. Well up. Come on, then. Counter-attack. Although Orlan is the only man forward right now. I need support, boys. I need support. It's arriving. Here's Daniel Marlon. We'll go on the outside the defender and push. Oh, it's certainly a foul. Tactical and cynical. And he's gotten away without a booking as well. I'm not entirely too sure he's done that. That's definitely a yellow card. Come on, Renato. Oh, tackled. I can't do it, can I, in this one? To start off with, the Champions League proving yet again to be a ridiculously difficult competition to be successful in. Tyler Roberts could turn the defender here, though. 
Wasn't the best of turns, but it will find Marlon, and we won't find the back of the net. Ay, ay, ay. Come on, boys. Really are going to run out of time now. That game against Leverkusen is going to be particularly difficult, I expect, as well. That's it. Through the gap nicely to Renato. And Melendo was on the move on this right-hand side. And he's got the pace, I think. Michael Antonio looks quite handy in a straight line as well. I've got support arriving here from Orlando. And Renato Sanchez will look for Tyler Roberts. Oh, outside of the posts with the last kick of the game. Oh, he's so desperately unlucky not to have won it as there. As soon as the keeper kicks this, that will be game. It's to be a point in Ukraine. And unfortunately, no winning start to the Champions League this season. I still fully expect us to get out of the group. And then the knockouts will be an entirely different kettle of fish. But a quite even game, to be fair. Uh, Spartak are away in Germany to start their Champions League campaign. I would imagine Leverkusen will quite comfortably win that. To be fair, we were away from home. I did expect to win today. We were away from home, though. It's not necessarily easy. And with the realism mod, um, European football is more difficult. The difficulty scaled up even more so from whatever sliders you're using. We are using more difficult sliders. I'll re-show those sliders, actually, at the beginning of the uh, Cambridge save because I know a number of people constantly ask me what my sliders are. Right, let me do that there. We'll put Engel back into this team as well. And then, actually, I'll leave that team as the main team as we push towards this game against Bayer Leverkusen, where I shall see you next. I'm intrigued to see what Leverkusen's lineup looks like. Kredetsky in goal still. Torgan Azar is here now. Danny, Danny Carvajal as well as Bertrand Troyore and Miri. Paulinho is still on the right for them. So that's a signing that stayed with them or a player that's been with them throughout. Michi Batshuayi leading the line. They did win on match day one by Leverkusen. So they currently top the group. And if Michi Batshuayi is a sign or that tackling from their striker is a sign of the level of dedication and efforts they're going to put in throughout the entirety of this fixture, then this is going to be a very difficult game. But if I can find the right pass for Tyler Roberts, which I can't, we could have had an early chance to take a 1-0 lead. The defender committed there, but Tine Edvai has done actually well. Committing was the right decision. Looks like they're going to be quite high with their aggression by Leverkusen. Orlant does well, and Renato can drive into the space opened up by Tyler Roberts' run. I tried to get it back to Orlant, but couldn't quite squeeze it. Eight minutes into the game, and already this is a very competitive fixture. I see go back to Marlon here, and then through to Wall and try and time it right. Nice right foot's been decent so far, not on that occasion. Does find the ball back to Tyler Roberts, so Renato out of his feet. Oh, and he replicates Tyler Roberts' effort from the first game. Edge of the box, power right behind it, outside of the right-hand post, no goal. Kimi into Tyler Roberts, Renato. Space for Nicolo Barela. And find the right ball to Orlan. Oh, and it might lead to a goal. Kredetsky with a good save. I tried to go near post and smash it rather than a cross goal. I didn't really have the angle for it. Kredetsky's going to come for this and punches it up. Tyler Roberts does well enough to win the initial encounter, but not to find a teammate. I don't know how good Torgan Hazard will be in season number eight. I don't imagine that his rating has started to drop yet. Nicely played. They've got Frank Kessier in midfield he's come in from AC Milan that ball was meant for Renato but it tried to play it to Ed Emily Town it's actually played me into some trouble here and Torgan Hazard thankfully is offside otherwise we could have been in trouble there right let's step it up boys let's get ourselves a goal to go in front a win against Leverkusen would be massive it was losing the games against AC Milan in the group stage last year that cost us towards the end of the Group stage, it meant that we didn't progress. Oh, and Renato so very close to giving us a great 1 0 lead. Sancho through the gap to Tyler Roberts. Renato's made the run through. Can he score on this occasion? You can't give him more than a couple of bites of the cherry. He's hit the post. He's come desperately close, and now he has his goal. All of the growth everywhere else in this team 
and it's Renato Sanchez that continues to be the most consistent performer. One of the more controversial signings when we brought him in, he has proven his worth time and time again. The lowest rated player in our starting 11, but one of the best players in the entire squad. Renato Sanchez makes it Leeds 1 by Leverkusen 0. Could be a massive goal for the overall outlook of this Champions League group stage. Amiri. Out to Torgan Hazard. Let's it run. It's left footed, isn't he? I think Torgan Hazard. I'm not sure, actually. Renato doesn't care what... Oh, it's not a foul ref, is it? Renato doesn't care what foots you stronger. He's not going to let you turn on to either. Ben Asset to deliver the ball into the middle for Leverkusen and away nicely by Militao to ensure no danger. Danger could return though as Kessier throws the ball to Paulinho there. He's knocked it down into space brilliantly. Whips the ball in. Hakimi can only head behind for another corner and Leverkusen's pressure continues here. This result would put us top of the group if it stays as is. We'd go on to four. Leverkusen would be on three and then depending on what happens between Shakhtar and Spartak, we might be joined by the Ukrainians on four points. Or it will be Spartak that joined Leverkusen on three. Or oh, they could equalise and we might not win in the first place. So it doesn't matter. In stoppage time at the end of the first half, Franck Kessier. Leverkusen won, Lees won. Back in there to Bernassa. Kessier, Amiri, Kessier, Amiri. Leverkusen getting more and more dangerous in this game. Torganazar will deliver it with his right foot. That answers my question from the first half. Bernat does just enough there. Bustos into Tinied by into Paulinho. Trying to get it off him with Malasia, but his footwork, Paulinho, is just too good. Thankfully, Stefan Engel is too good for him to be able to beat. Four day to Daniel Marlon, Tyler Roberts first. Not there, though. Oi, oi, oi. Into Orland. Early for Marlon. Go back to Orland. Oh, I could drop the shoulder and go. Oh, pff. Crumbled. Crumbled, Daniel Marlon. Just hauls to the floor. Paulinho going off for them. and making a change. I'm going to get this into Daniel Marlon. Take a touch. And bosh. Leads two. Leverkusen one. The training ground move works again. Lead restored. Let's go. It's Kessier. It's going. Ball whipped in towards the back post. Malassia. Oh, just gets there first. Just gets there first. Daniel Marlin going off and Ansu Fati coming on for the first time in a play game this season. And in the Champions League for me, Azar delivers. And away by Ansu Fati. His first action is great. Ben White intercepts there and we keep possession of Bolga out looking for Renato. Could go again down the line, Renato. He's elected not to. But Jaden Sancho is in, and we'll lay that for all that. And then for Tyler Roberts. And then for Ansu Fati. Oh my. That's it. Oh. I need to see a replay of that. Oh my god. How has he not squeezed that home with his first touch for me? Ansu Fati's first ever touch in a game for Leeds United in a played game. And he arrives here. It's post. Keeper, post, defender, keep... Oh, my God. How on earth has that not gone in? Post, keeper, post, keeper, defender, keeper, defender off the line. <sighs> so very nearly 3-1. Will I regret squaring that ball? I could have shot with a man through the middle, but elected to try and play Ansu Fati in for a dramatic entrance to Champions League life for the former Barcelona youngster. And it hasn't worked. Torgan Hazard has gone off. Bertrand Troyore is on for them, as is Tavata now in that change. And we'll see if those two changes. Obanassa very nearly just walking through my defence with some great footwork. And Sufati will go again here. And he is lightning fast and has the speed dribbler trait. If I can find the right ball, it's gorgeous. It's Sancho. It's a poor touch that kills it. Ansu Fati has certainly made a difference here, but so far that difference hasn't shown in the scoreline. Oh, 
Here he played through. Oh, superb. I just couldn't get close enough. Every time I tried to change player, they played a pass, and it just left the other man in more space. Exactly the same celebration as Franck Kessier. Not the uh, smartest of things to go and lie on the advertising audience like that right in front of the Leeds fans, but I, I just couldn't keep them out. Leverkusen level again. I really am starting to regret that Ansu Fati squared ball now. Malassia played in. Ansu Fati is here. Now, against Shakhtar, we got one more chance. Are we going to get that one more chance here? Are Leverkusen going to get that one more chance? Ball given away. And now they might be in. No, Ben White steps in nicely and crucially. Come on then, Tyler. Play you in. You're onside. Just that one more chance is going to be missed again. That one more chance falls to Tyler Roberts again. And we aren't able to finish it. That one more difficult than the previous. Can we win that with Renato Sanchez? We can, but it's not going to fall to a Leeds United man. Oh, it's still good. Barela tries to steal it away, but can't get a meaningful touch on it. And Leverkusen could be through, but Malasio intercepts, and that will be game. A 1-1 draw against Shakhtar. A 2-2 draw against Bayer Leverkusen. And the Champions League yet again proving to be a very difficult trophy to be successful in. Should have won that, though. Should have won that. Tried to give Ansu Fati his moment in the sun. And Leeds United have gotten burnt. I've gotten burnt. A Leverkusen in, this, in the second half was... A Leverkusen. An equaliser for Leverkusen in the second half was well-earned, to be fair, and well-taken, but... Shouldn't really have allowed them the opportunity to do that in the first place, should I? Right, the next game is Spartak in a few weeks' time. Let's head there now. So as we head to this game against Spartak, we are still second in the group as the Russians drew with the Ukrainians in their game. We'll sim this one and we'll sim the other game against Spartak as well. And then we'll know exactly what we have to do in the final two games. We won't end up in a situation where we have to risk going out with a simulated game or playing an extra game. Orlan with the goal after six minutes from the penalty spot has given us a 1-0 lead here. Jaden Sancho makes it two. We are going to win in Russia and win well a third. Leverkusen take the lead against Shakhtar and it suits us that... Oh, Orlan injured, please no. It suits us that our... Oh, Fatty off the bench to get a goal. He does have his first goal. In the Champions League for us, it's a 4-0 win against Spartak Moscow. That will do very nicely. How long is Erling Braut Orlan going to be out for? That's the question. The answer is nine days. So we can quite comfortably deal with that. Thank you very much. We're currently third in the Premier League table as things stand. Not sure how we're progressing in other cup competitions. We'll have a, a look at how we're doing in the Carabao Cup when we end today's episode just before the game. Oh, well, we've got Chelsea there. That's how we're doing in the Carabao Cup. We're into the round of 16. Let's go to this game against Spartak Moscow. Let's see if we can't win that one as well. Looking very convincing in the table now for ourselves and Leverkusen to be the ones that go through. Militao is currently out injured for a couple of weeks, but a couple of weeks only. It's Weston McKenney actually has been drafted in in his place. Annoyingly, Malassia picks up an injury inside 60 seconds, but he is able to continue for the time being. And Daniel Marlon is on fire in the opening half an hour with two goals. Will he get his hat-trick in the second half? Yes, Fatal comes on for Malassia. Jaden Sancho makes it three. Leverkusen just go 2-1 up against Shakhtar there just before half-time. Now make that 3-1 in the second half. A towel off the bench to get a goal from left-back, which is actually quite impressive. And back-to-back 4-0 -back wins against Spartak Moscow mean that we are in a commanding position for moving forward into... Oh, he's out for four weeks. It's, it's annoying. We are in a commanding position to move through into the knockout stages. In which case, we shall sim the game against Shakhtar and then play the game against Leverkusen for the right to finish top of the group. The offers come in for players. That's fine. Players getting injured in games. Transfer for Marlin. Loan bids left, right and centre. Suspensions. Players leaving on international duty. 
The starting lineup is oh, Orlani is banned for this game against Le against uh, Shakhtar. Well, I'd rather he missed this one than missed the next one. Uh, in fact, let me let me sim it with this team. Let's sim it with that team. Shakhtar away from home. Come on in. This should be. Well, I hope it will be straightforward. It will should show how much of a challenge Shakhtar were in the play game. If we don't win this convincingly, then it shows that it was an accurate portrayal in that first game that Shakhtar are actually a decent side. I mean, it is only the one goal to nil as we pass the hour mark. Ansu Fati grabs a second. But it does look like Shakhtar are actually quite stern opposition and it's not the most convincing of victories but we do get the three points so we shall head now into the game against Leverkusen and play that one for top of the table status we're currently second in the table in the Premier League as well although only on goal difference ahead of Liverpool City lead the way unbeaten and the game actually how did we get on in the Carabao Cup against Chelsea we drew 1-1 that means it would have gone to penalties, and I imagine, considering there's no more... Uh, oh no, we got through on pens. Nice, we got top in the quarterfinal. Well, let's see how we get on in that game. Let me make sure that we're simming with the rotation 11, which we are. And then we shall have that game against Bayer Leverkusen then to end today's episode before heading into the January transfer window tomorrow. Leverkusen looks similar to the first game, although... Uh, Singraven, I'm not sure, played at left back in the last one, although I can't actually remember their back line other than Bustos at right back. So, Kudetsky, Batshuayi, Palinio, Amiri, Hazard, that's the same. And their midfield of Ke uh, Kessier and Banasse is the same as well, but I can't remember who was playing in their defence other than Bustos. Regardless, we've got to beat whoever is in the way, so let's go and do that. It's winner takes all here. Whoever wins will top the group. Whoever finish, well, if we draw, then we'll definitely finish second. <laughs> but I'm not sure what the other groups look like, actually. It could be we might luck out. We might draw or lose, finish second in the group, and actually get a more favourable draw. But in theory, finishing first in the group and getting drawn against someone who finished second in their group in the first knockout round should be the better fixture easier fixture but as we've been finding out in this competition in this realism mod on pc there are no easy fixtures in the champions league we might have won back-to-back -back europa leagues but clearly this competition is a completely different competition altogether completely different challenge altogether Torgan Azar will deliver a corner for Leverkusen at the beginning of this game. They're at home now, obviously. I've actually changed my side a little bit because of uh, fitness issues. So Fatty's on the left, Melendo's on the right, Shackleton in midfield and Tomori at centre-back. And Orlan certainly won't last the full 90. Good tackle by Tomori there, but it won't quite fall for Ed Emily Tao. Vanessa into Batshuayi has a second effort of the game for the second time. He won't score. Ten minutes in. Leverkusen looking to force the issue. Considering they're the home side, you'd imagine that they'd be the more attacking. Wait and see if their pressure pays. But we are the ones in behind right now. And Melendo is in here. And I'll pull this back looking for Renato. It's comfortable for Khodetsky. As up to Kessier. As as out wide again. Trying to stop him from putting it through any gap. And Militao cuts the passing lane nicely. Shackleton in there to Renato Sanchez and Melendo is on his run again. He's very energetic and looking to get involved heavily. He's playing well, Oscar Melendo. We involve him again here and he's just going to race away from the defenders that are with him. And Orlan's next to me. Out onto your left. Bend it. It's well blocked. Ah, and it won't quite fall for Melendo. This game has a lot riding on it with regards to top of the group. And the other game in the group actually has a lot riding on that too. Shakhtar have two points. Spartak have won and they're playing each other to see who's going to finish in third and whoever does finish in third will st oh what a head of a Miri wow whoever does finish in third will continue on into the Europa League like we did last year and have the chance of still progressing in that competition cool that's a hell of a celebration 
I need to look at me quite that intensely. So everything on the line here and in the other game as well. And oh, Malassia didn't even bother to jump. That's annoying. Amiri makes it Leverkusen 1, Leeds United 0. Spartak Moscow were leading Shakhtar as well by one goal to nil last we heard. So fourth place and third place are about to change over it seems. But first and second, as things stand, will be staying the same. Come on, Jamie. Can't win the ball and then just fall over. That's not going to help me win a bloody game of football, is it? Fukuyo Tomori does well. Just getting through the group stage is important enough for us here. And then the knockouts are an entirely different prospect. So, fingers crossed we fare better in the knockouts than we have done in the play group stage games. Knockouts were relatively straightforward for us in the Europa League in Season 6. So, in Season 7, we simmed them and still got to the final. So, we've both played our way and not played our way to European finals. But I don't know what the knockout stages of the Champions League are going to be like. And if we come up against someone like AC Milan, then we're really going to be stuck. But hopefully we can oh, get ourselves back into this game to give me the confidence that we can go further in the group stage or in the knockouts even. Obviously, we will have additions to the squad via the January transfer window from you guys uh, suggestions for the next episode so hopefully you guys can give me the right signings we need to ensure that we are better than we have been oh good save by Kroditsky caught after the shot had come in but unfortunately no fail decent delivery oh everybody missed that I think Tomori will chase after it Drop the shoulder on the defender and lose out to Paulinho. Then win it back and do a front flip. All right, half time. Shackleton into Tyler Roberts and across to Renato Sanchez. Driving forward. Lift that over the top. There's been another goal in Shakhtar. And it's a goal for Spartak again. They lead by two goals to nil now. And it does look like the Russians will be going into the Europa League. And the Ukrainians are crashing out of all European competition. They've... Leverkusen have had less of the ball than me, but scored more goals than me. And at this stage, that's the most important. At half-time, I've taken uh, Orlan off and brought on Mateus Cunha. So, hopefully, the fresher legs will help get us back in the game. Oh, it's just outside the box from Militao. I panicked for a minute. I thought I'd given away a penalty. The referee isn't brandishing a card, but they do have a great opportunity here to score a second goal. They're taking, I think it was Paulinho off. And Yazici's coming on. It was Amiri going off. Yazici's come on. Oh, dummies. And then buried by... No, it was Yazici that took the free kick. All over the place. The dummy run. I'm not sure who it was that gave the dummy run. It showed Yazici's name in the bottom left. So I presume that was him that was running over the ball as he was the player in motion. As Yazici stood over it, and oh, it's a lovely free kick. Leverkusen extend their lead off the bench to take that free kick, literally within seconds of entering the field of play. And with his first kick of the game, Yazici practically seals top of the group status for Bayer Leverkusen. This is not going to be an easy competition. Yes, Melendo. It's not going to be an easy competition to win this year, the Champions League. But we're back in the time easily. Why couldn't we have done that before they had that free kick? Oh, my God. 2-1. Back in it again. Ichi, nicely intercepted by Oscar Melendo. He's having a very good game here. Never used him before, Oscar Melendo. Or even really contemplated using him before. Not really a player I've ever looked at but he's certainly impressing in the games that he's played so far today he's having a really good substitute appearance or sorry good start and he had a good substitute appearance in the last game I brought him on if he is left footed we'll get him onto that left and look to bend it but did that take it oh, we'll have the free kick took a deflection via the foul now can we do what we did in the last game it's going to be a no in response to that question Oh, trying to make it work 
from the training ground again, but they were wise to it this time. Fatty finds Mateus Cunha, who's gotten around the corner, but can't finish it. Kudetsky palms it away, and Leverkusen's lead remains intact. And if we are to win the group, we are going to need to score two here. I need to win this game to win the group. And time is running out for that. I would like to, at the very least, considering the situation we find ourselves in now, at the very least, not lose this game. Come on, Renato. You know you love to get forward. Little back heel to Jamie Shackleton. To Tyler Roberts again. Ansu Fati with a little fancy flick. Renato couldn't get running because he was too busy getting stuck on the man on the floor. It's just in-game physics not really working in my favour there. Seven minutes to go. It looks like we're at least going to not win this game, but hopefully we can avoid the defeat. Oh, it's terrible. I might have just confirmed the defeat by giving away possession there. But now so to Yazici, well blocked by Militao. Well up and one away as well. Tyler Roberts to Jamie Shackleton. Cunha is on the run and into space. Up against Jason Murillo. Little spin. Oh, too much. Too much on it. Prins gets back. And puts in a great sliding tackle. And now the counter-attack the other way. Is Paulinho going to keep that in? He's not. Seconds remaining as Mitsubatsuaya goes off for them. Well, we're going to finish second in the group. But we are through the group. And that is the most important thing. Tyler Roberts. Ah. Sums up my fortune in this game. We hit the post in numerous games in this group stage. Two draws and a defeat from the three played games. But thankfully, the Sims ones have gotten us through. Spartak Moscow will finish second, sorry, third in the group. We will finish in second. Uh, I'll say you can prove me wrong. I had to rotate because of fatigue. And I think moving forward, as we head into the knockout stages, I'm going to manage the squad better rather than... Um, just sim the calendar. I'm just going to work my way through and sim game to game. Not show you, not necessarily show you it, but sim game to game so I can manage the squad better so that when it comes to the important Champions League games, I have the right squad available to me. Because the, I got caught out there as I went into that crucial, important game and didn't have the players available that I wanted to have available, which is annoying. But we will... Progress forward towards the January transfer window and then move through that January transfer window in tomorrow's episode once you guys have given me your feedback. But we might as well crack on here and end the episode by ending the month and see how we get on. Quick, I'll just quick sim these. Leads 3, Southampton nil, And that puts us top of the table briefly. And we have Manchester City next. So we could... Oh, they've won their game in hand, City. So we could end the month top of the Premier League table and end the year top of the Premier League table on oh, a big 2-1 win by Erling Bro Orlan in the penultimate minute of the game sees us go top outright risk of losing a player Calvin that's not a problem we're not we're definitely not doing another season so often for a title retracted we can uh, let players leave on a free at the end of this year because there isn't going to be a next year Bournemouth at home should, in theory, be a pretty straightforward victory. And definitely was a straightforward victory. Ansu Fati with a brace. Watford next on Christmas Eve, actually. Not playing on box Boxing Day, on Christmas Eve. We'll sim with that team so that we can play Manchester United with the stronger team on the 27th. They've got a draw against Liverpool, so not to be underestimated, Watford. But Ansu Fati apparently is scoring quite a few goals in these simulated games, which is good news for us. I've actually enjoyed using him and Oscar Melendo. I wasn't sure how much of an impact they'd actually have. But Oscar Melendo has been very good. And Ansu Fati's pace and agility has certainly been very good to play with. Zakaria pulled one back there in the last few moments. Otherwise, Man United looked like they were getting absolutely hammered. City, though, will not let up. Or let me get away. Newcastle at home then to end the episode. Do let me know your transfer suggestions in the comment section down below. And I will take them into account and act upon them in tomorrow's episode. As we move into and through the January transfer window. On our way towards... Oh, Jesus. 
the round of 16 in the Champions League where we have Bayern Munich. Not going to get any easier, is it? Christ, that's an awful draw. That's an awful draw. The other... Let's have a look. What are the other... The other fixtures in the Champions League? Oh, we couldn't have gotten more unlucky, could we? Who did Leverkusen get? PSG. So really, we'd have gotten a hell of a difficult draw either way. And Bayern Munich and PSG in the same group. It's one hell of a group. Atletico, Leipzig, Chelsea, AC Milan, Napoli, Dortmund, Liverpool, Monaco, Real Madrid, Roma and Barcelona, Lyon. So the group stages, Leverkusen smashed it in the group. Milan and Atletico in the same group and they destroyed that one. Lyon and Chelsea as Juventus go out. Bayern, Napoli. I thought they'd have been in the same group. Bayern, Napoli, Galatasaray, Celtic. I thought first from one group played second from another group and second from the first group played first from the other group. It must not have been that way. Dortmund and Liverpool both level on 13 points but head-to-head -head going in Dortmund's favour there. Leipzig and Paris Saint-Germain through as Manchester City crash out of the Champions League. Roma and Barcelona through and Monaco and Real Madrid through as well in that fashion. Monaco winning that group. Well then, into January we'll go. Who do I sell? Who do I buy? Let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you on stream in a few hours time. Link down below to Twitch. Come and join me. I'll see you there or tomorrow in another episode of this series.